Well, we're um, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> hopefully I'm not too glitchy. Um, I'm going to wait a few more minutes just to see if anyone else is going going to join us. So um, just kind of hang out for a few minutes and then uh, we'll get started. All right. If you haven't done so already, maybe um, say hi in the comments um, and then uh, leave me any kind of comments as I'm going if, if things aren't going so well. Uh, my first time trying a live stream, so uh, we'll get started in, in probably about three or, uh, three or four minutes. Maybe I'll go ahead and turn it so that you guys can see my journal. Um, that way you don't have to stare at me for the next couple minutes. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and get started now. Um, thank you all for tuning in. This is my very first uh, Facebook Live, uh, first live stream, so 
I'm really hoping that um, it's going to go smoothly. Uh, so uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I, 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 um, it's much easier to just, just to set up the camera and, and talk into it and record a video. So um, thank you so much for being here. Um, there was a question about whether or not I was going to um, have this uh, left if it was going to be on uh, the Facebook page once we're done yes I have it set up where it's gonna stay so that way if you want to go back and watch it again and then I'm also recording it uh, to my computer so that I can hopefully upload it to YouTube as well so that it'll be accessible on there so um, like I said thanks for tuning in uh, if you want to say hi in the comments uh, awesome that way we can kind of see who is here and uh, where you're tuning in from um, so welcome hopefully you, you kind of know who I am if not let me just do a real quick introduction uh, I'm Eric Scott I'm probably better known as one half of the journal fodder junkies um, I've been working in visual journals now for about 20 years and I I've always well over the last couple of years I've been really thinking about ways that I could engage and, and um, share what I do with more people and so the idea of live streaming has been there but uh, this is my first foray and and with what's going on in the world today and, and how many things are getting canceled and you know we're all kind of quarantining ourselves and socially distancing ourselves from each other I thought well now's a prime opportunity to start into this live streaming thing so uh, my plan is to do it every well not every day every weekday over the next uh, week or so or maybe longer um, and just kind of walk through some of the things that I do in my journal so uh, I am not a person who sits down and works on a single page from beginning to end I jump around and it's something that I like to call um, uh, the accumulation of small acts so uh, by just engaging with one material or one technique or one one process and doing that even for 15 20 minutes at a time uh, over a week two week three week a year period you know all those little things add up so that's how I'm gonna work I'm gonna show you how I typically work in my journal so I want to go ahead and switch you all over so that you can see my journal let me go ahead and go back to that okay so this is a little journal. I typically work in a much bigger journal, a, a very large journal, actually 11 by 14. This is um, eight and a half inches tall and it is five and a half inches wide. This is a book by Stillman and Byrne and uh, it has some nice heavy duty watercolor paper. And I started this at the beginning of the month, actually uh, on the very, well, second day of March, down in North Carolina. I was teaching down there um, for, uh, at the John C. Campbell Folk School. And um, I really, um, I, I haven't finished it, but I thought it would be a, a good size and I thought it would be a, a good space to start some of these things so my plan is to maybe spend about a half an hour um, and so I really encourage people to have the materials if you don't of course you can always come back and watch this later um, but I I uh, like I said I started this and as I'm kind of going through you can see how it's starting to get a little bit more sparse there's not quite as much going on and that's how I typically work I do kind of work in like in order as far as pages but I jump around a lot so even tonight you'll probably see me jumping around quite a bit um, so I'm gonna start working in this journal and uh, kinda continue where I was working so now you can see how things are really getting much sparser and there's not a whole lot going on and uh, so like I said I'm gonna kinda work in here I'm just gonna skip to some pages here where I can work so I've got a space and I want to just work with watercolor tonight's just about working with the uh, watercolor paint um, actually I lied um, it's not watercolor paint I have two little trays over here that you can kind of see uh, this is Derwent ink tense 
travel paint sets. And uh, I got into these recently. I love Derwent Inktense pencils. And I like this because it's each one of them has 12 different colors and it's a nice, nice good set. Um, so some watercolor paint, gonna need a brush. I've got a cup of water over here off screen. Um, if you don't have a journal, feel free to grab some uh, loose leaf paper or uh, other types of paper. I like the Strathmore mixed media paper. So that's something that maybe I'll grab um, in between. And then I've got some other things as well. Um, I've got some plastic mesh here. This plastic mesh uh, has been, this is what's known as plastic canvas. And uh, my grandmother used to stitch yarn through it and uh, we're gonna use it as a stencil. And in the supply list, uh, if, you, if you checked out the website, um, I mentioned some kind of flat stencils. Uh, I don't have letter stencils, I actually have this, which I've heard re uh, referred to as Punchinella. And uh, so I'm gonna use that, I like that because it comes in different sizes. And uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's actually sequin waste. And it's gonna help us um, create some textures and whatnot, so. Um, and then I have some random plastic items. I thought of these last minute, so. Uh, I've got some empty plastic containers and a lid from one of my uh, uh, glue sticks. So tonight's just all about watercolor paint. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and dive in. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and then um, I'll try to get to them as we go. So <clears throat> anyway, um, I think one of the hardest things is like, what, what am I gonna do on these pages? And I don't know about you, but as an artist, I, I never try to have an idea. I never try to visualize exactly what's going to happen, um, what it's gonna be like. So what I try to do is I try to um, just start working. There's a great quote by Chuck Close, uh, inspiration is for amateurs. The rest, is, the rest of us just show up and get to work. And so I think once we get to work, then um, we can really start getting the ideas. So a lot of times, whether it's my journal or whether it's uh, larger pieces or pieces meant to be hung on the wall, I just get started. So watercolors are a great way of doing that. Um, so with this book, I, I've been a little bit more intentional with the way I've been doing things. So I'll kind of share that with you. Um, so I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna, th I'm gonna think about color, but I'm not gonna worry so much about trying to paint a picture or trying to paint um, a perfect color or shape or anything like that. So I'm just going to get some water and then I'm going to pick a color. Maybe I'll start off with, uh, I like this magenta, uh, this fuchsia I think is what Inktense calls it. And all I'm going to do is just sort of scrub, just paint it down, get real messy with it, not worrying about it being perfect, not even worrying about it filling up the entire page. Get a little bit more water and just scrub. Um, I, I could be a little bit neater and paint a nice wash of paint, but I really don't care about that. Um, and then what I'm gonna do though is, a lot of times with journaling, we think about it as like, I do this page, and then this page is separate from what's going on here. Here lately, what I've been doing is really um, thinking about how, how things connect. And so I'm gonna use this darker red and have it mix in with that fuchsia and again I'm just being quick and messy about it and then I'm gonna switch to kind of a more of a reddish orange over here and I'm gonna paint that to the edge and again I'm just being messy letting it go off the edge not worrying about the the, um, the empty white space not worrying about how neat it is now this is wet and some people have no problem just turning the page but if I don't want this red to transfer onto here, I can use a hair dryer. Um, or what I could do is set this aside and grab my mixed media paper and work on that and then um, come back as this is dry. But since we don't have that time and I don't have the space here, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'll probably break your eardrum so you might wanna turn down the sound a little bit. I'm gonna grab my handy dandy hair dryer real quick and then um, I'll go ahead and uh, just dry that real fast. Maybe, 
Oh, I guess not. I guess my hair dryer is not working. Um, anyway, since I've been talking, it's it's kind of fine. So it's dried up a little bit. So anyway, uh, the the wonders of being on live. All right. So this red, what I want to do, I'm going to have it kind of wrap around, and I want it to continue here. So that's what's really different. This is something that. Um, I've been really thinking about lately so I can think about how that is gonna go into there and I can keep doing that and I can start 10 15 20 pages or more like that however I'm gonna go ahead and show you a different technique so um, what I want to do now is switch the color so I think I'm gonna go to more of an, a regular orange and another favorite technique of mine is splattering and uh, so when I do this, I'm not going to take my paintbrush and try to fling it because I'll end up throwing paint all over my space and onto my walls. Um, what I like to do, this is a stiff bristled nylon brush. And what, I'm, what I want to do is to, to kind of just flick, the, um, to flick the, the bristles. And what I want to do is point the brush down and I want to pull back and that's going to flick the the bristles forward and so they're gonna you know get paint up here maybe a little bit of paint on my work surface but this is a great way of adding some texture to it so I could just leave that um, and you might even notice over here I don't know how good quality the video is but some of the dots have bled into the wet paint that was already there um, so that's kind of interesting. One of the things I can do, though, if I wanted to, I could just turn the page, or I'm going to take my brush and get a little bit of water, and I'm going to paint over my dots. So the dots that are already dry are going to stay there, and the dots that are wet will spread. And so I just get a little bit... Uh, get a little bit different feel it feels a little bit more connected and, and it softens it a little bit um, so what I really am trying to do is just to get some some paint down trying to make some backgrounds um, so yeah, all right so I've got that all right those two connect and you know what my paper's wet but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it anyway and then I'm gonna flip it and uh, and then um, so I was using this orange, so maybe I'll pick back up with some of my, my scrubbing and my scumbling. Maybe I'll switch into this yellow, yellow orange. And then maybe into some yellow. Okay. So that already gives me, you know, three sets, uh, three two-page spreads of, of stuff. Um, and I can keep going, but maybe I want to go back. Maybe I want to go back to some of these pages where I already have some things that are going. Like this is a, this is a good page. So along with just starting pages, I can start some layering. And I love layering. So this page is nice and dry. It's something that I've done a while ago. So now maybe I'll use my plastic mesh. So I've got the um, I've got the uh, the uh, the square one, sorry, and I've got a round one. Uh, and you can buy these at the craft store. They're they're pretty easy easy to get. But I found that sometimes people who use window screen. Um, there's all kind of different things that you can use. I, I like when I find something instead of going out and buying expensive stencils. Now this plastic mesh is kind of thick so I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna poke my brush through it. Um, so that's where the stiff bristles are gonna come in handy. So if I take, eh, maybe I'll take this, uh, it's a red oxide I think is what it's called, and I'm gonna hold my mesh still and then I'm just gonna poke straight up and down so sorry if it's kind of in the way oh I have dogs so it, you know you're gonna probably hear them bark uh, and I've got cats so who knows if a cat's gonna jump up here and, and want to play with us so um, but I'm sure many of you can can relate to that 
So anyway, what I'm doing is tapping, tapping, tapping into the holes. Now, sometimes if you have a lot of water, it's going to run and bleed and puddle. But I think that's really kind of a, a cool effect. So let's do the same thing down here. Maybe wipe off more of the water this time so it doesn't bleed and puddle as much. And I can continue. <clears throat> so I just love this little kind of uh, grid-like texture that happens. And because it's watercolor, it's very unpredictable. And I know some people hate watercolor just because of that, because it is unpredictable. But I, I, I think that's a challenge. And I, I like that because it forces me to kind of accept things where they are. So there goes my dogs again. I wonder if my wife is home. They like to bark whenever... I'm going to close my door. Hold on. reasons I that I was reluctant to start live streaming before now um, was that it's only in my house that I get good Wi-Fi so being out in my studio in the garage I don't um, but then we have to deal with with dogs um, so anyway so I apologize <laughs> for anybody that uh, but like I said a lot of you probably uh, have have um, have dogs and animals. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna go from that. So I've got this nice, nice page. If I wanted to, I could kind of do like I did with the splattering and spread some of the uh, watercolor paint. And what I like, what I like about this, uh, the intense paint pans, is that it really kind of uh, dries pretty permanently and it doesn't blend a lot of times with regular watercolor this will just kind of wash away it will reactivate even after it's dry um, so anyway I've got got that going on all right so let's go ahead and turn to the punchinella so again this is that sequin waste and this is really really good for um, adding more texture so let's go ahead and turn to a page. So even going back to pages that I've already done, and that's one of the things I like to do is to find spaces. So maybe right here, if I take that and put that down like that. Now this is thinner plastic, so you could use thin plastic uh, stencils. Uh, letter stencils work really well. Um, I'm gonna take, eh, Maybe I'll take some more of that fuchsia color, that pink magenta color. Um, it, it's the same thing. If I have a lot of water, it's really going to spread underneath, but that's, that's not bad. So just kind of scrubbing it on. Scrub, scrub, scrub. There, and then pull it up. And again, it really puddled, but there are some places where I have that, um, that uh, those marks. Um, it's just too much water in, in my brush. Let me try it over here. And maybe not have so much water. If you don't want it to puddle so much, you can use a sponge and squeeze out all the water from the sponge and uh, you get a cleaner, uh, cleaner um, pattern so yeah it's just really wet but I like that texture though
And so with the, the watercolor is great for starting to build up some of these initial layers. So, um, and then finally, I'll show you the, the plastic containers. Um, so I think I'm going to flip Oh, Here's a good spot for those. Um, and so what I like to do is paint, paint the, 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 uh, the rim and then stamp with it. So we'll take some of this turquoise. Just painting the rim. And then I can stamp with it. But what I find is sometimes if I twist just a little bit, then I get a nice uh, circle. It's not a complete circle, but I kind of like that. So let me go ahead and do another one with this. Again, just paint the rim with the paint. This time I'll have it go off the edge. Okay, and then I like having different sizes. Just gonna use the same color. And finally use the little one. And if I don't want it to bleed and, and transfer, I can always dry it, set it aside. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and, and flip my pages. And sometimes I like to do that on purpose. So if I kind of flip it over, rub it, and yeah, you know, some of the things have transferred and kind of uh, kind of interesting interesting textures there. So um, let's go back. So here's that page that I started before. Um, maybe I'll go and use a little bit of brown and do some of my splattering just to add some more texture to it. And one of the things that I try to do whenever I'm starting these initial layers is I try to keep the colors related. So that yellow relates to, uh, or that yellowish orange relates to the red uh, oxide that I used, then it relates to the the brown that I just used, and uh, that that just helps set the tone. And I'm going to come back and do more and more to the, these. And uh, so, if you're kind of wondering what's going to happen with those uh, pages, let's go back to the ones that I was working on earlier. So these aren't totally dry, but I can go ahead. And maybe I want to do some more punchinella. And so get a little bit of those, or get a little bit of that. And let's see what color. Maybe, maybe some of that red oxide again. And then, again, too much water, and it's really going to bleed underneath the mesh, or not the mesh, but the plastic. Oh, oh, there's one more thing I, I was going to show, and I just realized I didn't get it out. So luckily it's right behind me, so let me grab it. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But again, you can see that it's just a nice little texture. 
and if I wanted to I could dry this before I turn my pages um, but now I'm gonna skip ahead so now I've done some layering so let me skip back so I'd have some yellow there um, so maybe I want to pick up some of this yellow here to kind of continue and then maybe turn into more of the yellow green maybe pick up some phthalo green okay and then over here I'm gonna do something I'm gonna use another favorite material and that is bubble wrap so I'm not gonna need the whole thing um, but I can go ahead and use part of this and I'm gonna use that phthalo green again and I have it with the bubble side up um, I know it's real tempting to pop the bubbles and if you're in a workshop of mine, I, I always tell you not to pop my bubbles, but hey, you're in your own studio. If you have bubble wrap, pop your own bubbles as much as you like. But the bubbles are there and they're gonna help us. So I'm gonna take and paint a little bit of this green. Now, if you've used bubble wrap before and it has watercolor paint on it, you're gonna reactivate that watercolor paint. Luckily on here, I have this nice clean spot. Um, and so I'm just gonna paint some of those bubbles. I don't need a lot of paint on it. And then I'll turn it over and I'm gonna press this down. I'm gonna lay it down on top and then just gently, gently, gently press it. And what I wanna do is just keep pressing it until I can really see that the bubbles are sticking down to the page. And I can leave it there for a couple minutes. I could leave it there until it totally dries and you might not be able to see it, but in each bubble there are these like little wrinkles and if I leave it to dry completely, those little wrinkles are going to show up. But I'm just going to pick it up, and you can see that I have this nice texture. Get that out of the way. Um, so by pulling it up, the paint just puddles back, and I have these nice little spots. And again, I can let that dry. Uh, but for our purposes, I can go ahead and turn the page and see what happens. So sometimes I, I like doing this where I just turn the page and uh, you get you get some very unpredictable, some very random things. So, you know, the bubbles still really showed up here, but then got all these this other texture over here. So it's kind of completely random. And, you know, all of these spaces are going to be really good um, spaces and beginnings of pages. Um, so there are a lot of other techniques that I could use, a lot of other watercolor techniques, um, but it's it's one of those things where you know I, you could spend a day just exploring all the different watercolor techniques. I mean, I I've used string, I've used sponges, so. Uh, if anybody remembers back in the 80s and the 90s when sponging your walls was really, really the, the hip thing to do. Um, but you could do the same thing in your journal. Um, there, there are just so many different things. There's salt. So if you have watercolor paper or mixed media paper, um, you know, you could use salt in there. I just didn't want to grab a whole bunch of different materials because I like to keep things a little bit more portable. And, and with moving... The recording studio from uh, the um, from the studio into my house I kind of felt like okay I need to pare it down I need to limit myself so just having some simple materials that I can easily tuck into my backpack get out of the way so that the cats can't get into it and play with it um, that's kind of what I wanted to do so um, you know all this stuff fits into a small box whenever I clean up and uh, it it, it, it goes away pretty quickly and that's one of the things I love about journaling is that that you it, you can take it anywhere and I always have a, a, you know a couple bags in my backpack so anywhere anytime I'm traveling um, I can can uh, 
I can just set up and, and be working anywhere. Uh, so uh, anyway, I that's kind of it. Like I, I, I was aiming at, you know, between 30 minutes and 45 minutes. It, it kind of depends. Um, and I uh, just wanted to kind of give you some quick ideas and do some quick demonstrations just to so that you can could start working on your own and again this could be something that you're doing in your journal it could be something that you're doing on um, just some loose paper uh, I am going to get into some techniques that really work best in the journal um, but uh, that's going to come up later so um, I really appreciate you all tuning in tonight um, like I said, this is going to be recorded and it's going to be saved and, and you can come back to it and you can share it with your friends and all that kind of stuff. And um, so really, really appreciate that. Uh, my plan is to to uh, come back every weekday and do something and share something. So tomorrow I'll be back, but I'll be back in the morning. So at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, uh, tune in. I'm going to come back and... Um, dive into some watercolor pencil and uh, maybe I don't know if that's it I'll have to kind of see um, what else I have planned um, so really you know so tomorrow morning and then I'll take the weekend off and then we'll pick back up on Monday and then we'll do Monday Wednesdays and Fridays at uh, 10 a.m. and then Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. because that just fits around my, my schedule um, so Anyway, uh, hopefully you can join in. And like I said, if you can't, I'll always have the, the videos archived and saved on Facebook and hopefully on YouTube as well. And one last thing, kind of the, the shameless self-promotion part of the video is that um, if you haven't been to the website, I'll put a link in the uh, comments after I'm done here. Uh, but if you could go to the, the website, um, go to the shop, there's a digital goods one. And uh, if you are so inclined and, and you feel like, oh, this is great and you want to support a uh, fellow artist, um, there's, a, there's a, a, a space there where you can click on and you, there are different levels of support. Um, to, so just like a lot of people, uh, the, the whole situation currently has, has had an in, a big impact and I've had lots of events canceled. And um, so that's why I'm kind of doing this is, is a way for me to reach out and share those things that I would have been sharing um, out there at the various workshops and things that I would have been doing at this time. So um, anyway, so if you can, if you're in the position where you could help out an artist, uh, greatly appreciate it, or just help out your other you know, fellow artists and, and show them some support and some love. So anyway, really, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in and be back here tomorrow bright and early, 10 a.m. Eastern time. So, you know, if you're on the, the Pacific coast, um, maybe sleep in and, and catch a replay. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate all of your time. Um, so have fun with watercolor and happy creating. <laughs>